Our next example of integration in spherical coordinates is to find the volume of the region which is above the surface phi equals pi over 3 and below the surface rho equals 4 cosine phi. So let's first try to figure out what these surfaces are. So we could convert to Cartesian. So if we take the surface phi equals pi over 3, well, remember that z equals rho cosine phi. So I have that phi equals pi over 3, if and only if, well, that's when cosine of phi is a half, so that means that z equals rho over 2. And you could square both sides to get that z squared equals rho squared over 4. And if you expand this out, this says that z squared equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared over 4. Or combining things a little bit, this says that 3z squared equals 4x squared plus 4y squared. So this surface is a cone. However, the surface we want is obtained by um, solving this equation um, where you have to take plus or minus the square root. So we only want the solution where z is positive. So we just want the upper half of this cone. Okay, so the, the surface phi equals pi over 3, I draw it like this, So z equals pi of sorry z equals phi, sorry phi equals pi over three. So this is the upper half of the cone where three z squared equals four x squared plus four y squared. Okay, now what about the other surface? What's that? So if I convert that to Cartesian rho equals 4 cosine phi. Well, I can multiply both sides of this equation by rho to get rho squared equals 4 rho cosine phi. So that says that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4z. So I can now complete the square to write this as x squared plus y squared plus z minus 2 squared equals 4. So this is a sphere of radius 2 centered at the point 0, 0, 2. This is analogous to something we saw a very long time ago when we wrote certain circles in polar coordinates. Okay, so our other surface looks like this. I made a slightly lopsided drawing. But anyway, um, this is rho equals 4 cosine phi. So this is a sphere of radius 2. With center 0, 0, 2. Okay. We didn't actually really need to do this in order to solve the problem, but it's nice to know what surfaces we're actually talking about here and draw the picture. Okay, so, and also I'll remark that the fact that V equals pi over 3 is the upper half of a cone, if we sort of think about what the angle phi means, then we can sort of see directly that this is a cone without solving any equations. So, you know, if you take surfaces where phi is constant, if phi is very small and constant, you're going to get a sort of very, very, uh, very thin cone like this, and if phi is a bigger constant, you're going to get a, a flatter cone like that. If phi is constant and equal to pi over two, you're going to get the plane z equals zero. Then, if you take surfaces where phi is constant and bigger than pi over two, you're going to get the lower halves of cones. Okay, so the surfaces where phi is constant are halves of cones, or um, the xy plane.
All right, so now that we know what our surfaces are, let's evaluate the integral to calculate the volume. So the volume is the triple, triple integral over the region of 1 dv. Now what was our region here? So we were um, above phi equals pi over 3 and below um, rho equals 4 cosine phi. Okay, So that means that phi is going from what to what? Well, above phi equals pi over 3 means that phi is less than pi over 3 because sort of at the top on the positive z-axis phi is 0. Okay, so phi goes from 0 to pi over 3. So it's a little confusing here because the thing that we're above, um, normally that would be the lower limit of the integral, but here's the upper limit of the integral because sort of, you sort of go down as phi increases. Okay. Uh, and what about theta? Well, theta can be anything, and so to cover everything once, we'll have theta going from 0 to 2 pi. And rho, so below rho equals 4 cosine phi means rho is going from 0 to 4 cosine phi. So rho, rho goes from 0 to 4 cosine phi. And now we just put a 1. And we don't forget the magnification factor, rho squared times sine phi, d rho d theta d phi. Okay, now let's evaluate the rho integral. So the outer limits stay the same. And here I have rho squared times some constant. So I have rho cubed over 3 sine phi evaluated at rho equals 4 cosine phi and rho equals 0 d theta d phi. So this is blah, 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 blah. And then at rho equals 4 cosine phi, this is going to give me 64 over 3 cosine cubed phi sine phi. And at rho equals 0, I'm going to get 0. And then I integrate this over theta and phi. Okay, now when I integrate over theta, because there's no theta in here, it's like a constant, so I just multiply by 2 pi. So I get integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 128 pi over 3 times cosine cubed phi sine phi d phi. And now we can integrate this as 1 over 4 cosine to the fourth phi. So I get 32 pi, and, and I need a minus sign, so I get minus 32 pi over 3 cosine to the fourth phi, evaluated at um, phi equals pi over 3 and phi equals 0. So I get minus 32 pi over 3 times what? So at phi equals pi over 3, cosine of phi is a half. So I get 1 16th. At phi equals 0, cosine of phi is 1, so I minus 1. Okay, so I have minus 32 pi over 3 times minus 15 over 16. And fortunately, the minus signs cancel out because I'm computing a volume and I need to get a positive answer. And then when I simplify the fractions, I get 10 pi.